Welcome to the Disciple Smiths Podcast. We're going through the entire Bible in one year. This is part 15 of our study. We're going to be looking at Genesis chapters 47 through 50 today. Welcome to the Disciple Smiths Podcast. Well, hello and welcome back to the Disciple Smiths Podcast. Uh, we are in part 15 of our study through the entire Bible in one year. And so we are looking at the final chapters in the book of Genesis. Uh, in the next part of our study, we're going to be starting out in Exodus. And so we're just going to get right into it. We're covering chapters 47 through 50. So if you would, please get out your Bibles and follow along with me. If you'd like to read the same version, I am in the Holman Christian Standard Bible. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So 47 verse 1. So Joseph went and informed Pharaoh, My father and my brothers, with their sheep and cattle, and all that they own, have come from the land of Canaan, and are now in the land of Goshen. He took five of his brothers and presented them before Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh asked his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants, both we and our fathers, are shepherds. Then they said to Pharaoh, We have come to live in the land for a while, because there is no grazing land for your your servants' sheep since the famine in the land of Canaan has been severe. So now please let your servant settle in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Now that your father and brothers have come to you, the land of Egypt is open before you. Settle your father and brothers in the best part of the land. They can live in the land of Goshen. If you know of any capable men among them, put them in charge of my livestock. Joseph then brought his father Jacob and presented him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many years have you lived? Jacob said to Pharaoh, My pilgrimage has lasted 130 years. My years have been few and hard, and they have not surpassed the years of my fathers during their pilgrimages. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and departed from Pharaoh's presence. Then Joseph settled his father and brothers in the land of Egypt and gave them property in the best part of the land, the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with food for their dependents. But there was no food in that entire region, for the famine was very severe. The land of Egypt and the land of Canaan were exhausted by the famine. Joseph collected all the money to be found in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan in exchange for the grain that they were purchasing, and he brought the money to Pharaoh's palace. When the money from the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan was gone, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die here in front of you? The money is gone. But Joseph said, Give me your livestock. Since the money is gone, I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and he gave them food in exchange for their horses, the herds of sheep, the herds of cattle, and the donkeys. That year he provided them with food in exchange for all their livestock. When that year was over, they came the next year and said to him, We cannot hide from our Lord that the money is gone and that all our livestock belongs to our Lord. There is nothing left for our Lord except our bodies and our land. Why should we die here in front of you, both us and our land? Buy us and our land in exchange for food. Then we will, then our land will become Pharaoh, then we, we with our land will become Pharaoh's slaves. Give us seed so that we can live and not die and so that the land won't become desolate. In this way, Joseph acquired all the land in Egypt for Pharaoh, because every Egyptian sold his field since the famine was so severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's, and Joseph moved the people to the cities from one end of Egypt to the other. The only land he didn't acquire was the priest portion, for it was given to them by Pharaoh. They lived off the rations Pharaoh had given them, therefore they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Understand today that I have acquired you and your land for Pharaoh. Here is seed for you. Sow it in the land. At harvest you are to give a fifth of it to Pharaoh, and four-fifths will be yours as seed for the field and as food for yourselves, your households, and your dependents. And they said, You have saved our lives. We have found favor in our Lord's eyes and will be Pharaoh's slaves. So Joseph made it a law, still in effect today in the land of Egypt, that a fifth of the produce belongs to Pharaoh, Only the priest's land does not belong to Pharaoh. Israel settled in the land of Egypt, in the region of Goshen. They acquired property in it and became fruitful and very numerous. Now Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years, and his lifespan was 147 years. 
When the time drew near for him to die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, put your hand under my thigh and promise me that you will deal with me in kindness and faithfulness. Do not bury me in Egypt. When I rest with my fathers, carry me away from Egypt and bury me in their burial place. Joseph answered, I will do what you have asked. And Jacob said, Swear to me. So Joseph swore to him. Then Israel bowed in thanks at the head of his bed. Chapter 48 Sometime after this, Joseph was told, Your father is weaker. So he set out with his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. When Jacob was told, Your son Joseph has come to you, Israel summoned his strength and set up in his bed. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. He said to me, I will make you fruitful and numerous. I'll make many nations come from you, and I will give this land as an eternal possession to your future descendants. Your two sons born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you, and Egypt are now mine. Ephraim and Manasseh belong to me just as Reuben and Simeon do. Children born to you after them will be yours and will be recorded under the names of their brothers with regard to their inheritance. When I was returning from Padan, to my sorrow Rachel died along the way, some distance from Ephrath in the land of Canaan. I buried her there along the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. When Israel saw Joseph's sons, he said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, They are my sons God has given me here. So Jacob said, Bring them to me, and I will bless them. Now his eyesight was poor because of his old age. He could hardly see. Joseph brought them to him, and he kissed and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see your face again, but now God has even let me see your offspring. Then Joseph took them from his father's knees and bowed with his face to the ground. Then Joseph took them both, with his right hand Ephraim toward Israel's left, and with his left hand Manasseh toward Israel's right, and brought them to Israel. But Israel stretched out his right hand and put it on the head of Ephraim, the younger, and crossing his hands he put the left on Manasseh's head, although Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, May he bless these boys. And may they be called by my name, and the names of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and may they grow to be numerous within the land. When Joseph saw that his father had placed his right hand on Ephraim's head, he thought it was a mistake and took his father's hand and moved it to Ephraim's head to Manasseh's. Joseph said to his father, Not that way, my father. This one was, is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He too will become a tribe, and he too will be great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his offspring will become a populous nation. So he blessed them that day with these words. The nation Israel will invoke blessings by you, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh, putting Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Look, I am about to die, but God will be with you and will bring you back to the land of your fathers. Over and above what I am giving your brothers, I am giving you the mountain slope uh, that I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword and bow. Uh, chapter 49. Then Jacob called his sons and said, Gather around, and I will tell you what will happen to you in the days to come. Come together and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to your father Israel. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my strength and the first fruits of my virility. Excelling in prominence, excelling in power, turbulent as water, you will no longer excel because you got into your father's bed and you defiled it. He got into my bed. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their knives are vicious weapons. May I never enter their council. May I never join their assembly. For in their anger they kill men, and on a whim they hamstring oxen. Their anger is cursed, for it is strong, and their fury, for it is cruel. I will disperse them throughout the land, throughout Jacob, and scatter them throughout Israel. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the necks of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. Judah is a young lion. My son, you return from the kill. He crouches, he lays down like a lion or a lioness. Who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah or the staff from between his feet, until he who, whose right it, it is comes and the obedience of the peoples belong to him. He ties his donkey to a vine, and the colt of his donkey to the choice vine. 
He washes his clothes in wine and in the robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine and his teeth are whiter than milk. Zebulun will live by the seashore and will be a harbor for ships, and his territory will be next to Sidon. Isaacar is a strong donkey, lying down between the saddlebags. He saw that his resting place was good and that his land was pleasant, so he leaned his shoulder to bear a load and became a forced laborer. Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. He will be a snake by the road, a viper beside the path, that bites the horse's heels so that its rider falls backwards. I wait for your salvation, Lord. Gad will be attacked by raiders, but he will attack their heels. Asher's food will be rich, and he will produce royal delicacies. Naphtali is a doe set free that bears beautiful fawns. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine beside a spring. Its branches branches climb over the wall. The archers attacked him, shot at him, and were hostile toward him. Yet his bow remained steady, and his strong arms were made agile by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, by the name of the shepherd, the rock of Israel, by the God of your father who helps you, and by the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of the heavens above, blessings of the deep that lies below, and blessings of the breasts and the womb. The blessings of your father excel in blessings of my ancestors, and the bounty of the eternal hills. May they rest on the head of Joseph, on the crown of the prince of his brothers. Benjamin is a wolf. He tears his prey. In the morning he devours the prey, and in the evening he divides the plunder. These are the tribes of Israel, twelve in all. And this was what their father said to them. He blessed them, and he blessed each one with a suitable blessing. Then he commanded them, I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite. The cave is in the field of Machpelah near Mamre in the land of Canaan. This is the field Abraham purchased from Ephron the Hittite as a burial site. Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried there. Isaac and his wife Rebekah are buried there, and I buried Leah there. The field and the caves in it were purchased from the Hittites. When Jacob had finished instructing his sons, he drew his feet into the bed and died. He was gathered to his people. Chapter 50, the last verse in all of Genesis. Then Joseph, leaning over his father's face, wept and kissed him. He commanded his servants who were physicians to embalm his father. So they embalmed Israel. They took 40 days to complete this, for embalming takes that long, and the Egyptians mourned for him 70 days. When the days of mourning were over, Joseph said to Pharaoh's household, If I have found favor with you, please tell Pharaoh that my father made me take an oath, saying, I am about to die. You must bury me there in the tomb that I made for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go and bury my father, then I will return. So Pharaoh said, Go and bury your father in keeping with your oath. Then Joseph went to bury his father and all of Pharaoh's servants, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt went with him, along with all Joseph's household, his brothers and his father's household. Only their children, their sheep, and their cattle were left in the land of Goshen. Horses and chariots went up with them. It was a very impressive procession. When they reached the threshing floor of Atad, which is across the Jordan, they lamented and wept loudly, and Joseph mourned seven days for his father. When the Canaanite inhabitants of the land saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a solemn mourning on the part of the Egyptians. Therefore the place is named Abel Mizraim, it is across the Jordan. So Jacob's sons did for him what he had commanded them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave at Machpelah, in the field near Mamre, which Abraham had purchased as a burial site from Ephron the Hittite. After Joseph buried his father, he returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had gone with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said to one another, If Joseph Joseph is holding a grudge against us, he will certainly repay us for all the suffering we caused him. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before he died, your father gave a command. Say this to Joseph. Please forgive your brother's transgression and their sin, uh, the suffering they caused you. Therefore, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when their message came to him. Then his brothers also came to him, bowed down before him, and said, We are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? 
You planned evil against me. God planned it for good to bring about the present result, the survival of many people. Therefore, don't be afraid. I will take care of you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph and his father's household remained in Egypt. Joseph lived 110 years. He saw Ephraim's sons to the third generation. The sons of Manasseh's son, Micah, were recognized by Joseph. Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will certainly come to your aid and bring you up from this land to the land he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Joseph made the sons of Israel take an oath. When God comes to your aid, you are to carry my bones up from here. Joseph died at the age of 110. They embalmed him and placed him in a coffin in Egypt. May God bless the reading of his word. May it shape and transform our minds to better discern his will. So we are finally through the first book of the Bible, Genesis. It, is, it lasted 50 chapters. It covers uh, all of ancient history from the creation of the world all the way up until Joseph dies. So I don't know what the actual timeline would be. It would be thousands of years. There is some dispute. It could cover millions or billions of years, depending on your view of creation. However, it does cover all of the beginning of human history all the way up until Joseph's death. Now, I believe that date to be around 1800 BC. Some pinpointed at 1805, but uh, that, that's not specifically determined. There's some leeway either way, but I, I believe that's a pretty accurate date. So God creates the world. He has plans and intentions for bringing salvation to all of humanity. Those plans are wrecked by the serpent who intervenes on behalf of himself to attempt to bring God down somehow, to foil God's plans. His pride gets in the way, and all of this is sort of unpacked throughout all of Scripture. But looking back on that, that's what happened. So Satan intervenes in God's plan. Uh, the people are scattered and they're sinning. God wipes out the world with a flood and decides to save the world through just a handful of people. Uh, sin remains. Uh, we are all born into sin. Uh, we are all dead in the spirit. And we all need salvation that cannot come from us. It has to come from the divine. And so God works out this plan to create a chosen people. And through that chosen people, he is going to bless the entire world eventually. So God calls Abraham out of the land of the Chaldeans, who is a direct descendant of Seth, and he is going to use Abram to bring about this, this salvation to the world. And so we get the story all the way up until Abraham has Isaac, his son, uh, through Isaac, Isaac has Jacob, and then Jacob has these 12 sons, and they're going to make up the 12 tribes of Israel. They get sold into, or they, they sell their brother Joseph into slavery down in Egypt, where Joseph just does some pretty miraculous things through the intervention of God and brings prosperity to the nation of Egypt. After this, Pharaoh makes Joseph second in command over everything. Joseph saves his family from the starvation and the famine that is happening. Joseph not only does that, but he also uh, buys up all the livestock, all the land of the peoples of the land of Canaan, as well as Egypt, and makes this Pharaoh extremely prosperous. And so the book ends with Joseph uh, dying. Uh, Jacob has died, and then now all the descendants are in this land uh, in Goshen is where scripture describes it. Now, there's a few things that we can we can kind of speculate on. Uh, one of the things that I almost obsess over is trying to determine the biblical timeline for the Exodus. Who was the Pharaoh during the Exodus? Who was the Pharaoh during, during Joseph's reign? And the Egyptian chronology doesn't line up quite right for me to place this, but I have a feeling. It's just kind of this... After researching and seeing it, um, there's a an Egyptian pharaoh named, I'll, I'll butcher this name, Senusret, Sen, Senusret III, 
who was in charge of Egypt during a land of great prosperity. And after that, the kingdom started falling apart and eventually ended the the dynasty that he was in charge of just a few pharaohs later. And that, that sort of makes sense to me that this prosperous king who has all these different things given to him uh, it would eventually that sort of thing would break down because the Israelites who brought him all this prosperity would come under slavery by the Egyptians. Now, one thing I wanted to point out uh, before we close this part of the video is that all the way back in the early chapters of Genesis, whenever God is calling Abraham, I believe it's either in chapter 13 or 14, he tells Abraham that your descendants will be slaves in the land of Egypt. For nearly 400 years and he says this with the addition because the sins the iniquity of the Amorites or Amalekites ha has not re yet reached its full potential and so while they are slaves in Egypt as we pass through this the Amalekites sin is just getting worse and worse and worse and we're gonna see that in um, the next few books but they're beginning child sacrifice they're worshiping pagan gods. They're performing all kinds of acts of evil. And so I just want you to remember that, that hearken back to that from the early chapters of Genesis. But uh, I hope this video finds you well. I'm so thankful that you decided to tune in with us. We're just going through the Bible in one year, uh, and we're going to try to just give a brief summary, keep these videos short, and hopefully you can listen to the Word of God, maybe on your way to work or school or uh, whenever you have some time. And so thank you. God bless. This is the Disciple Smiths Podcast.